And uh, next talk we have is about what we do with the uh, topic face value with the diverse nature of the contemporary self portrait. The photographic self portrait is often associated with self relegation and personal experience. Writer and curator Susan Bright argues. Historically, self-portraiture, specifically the painted self-portrait, has been understood as a representation of emotions, an outward expression of inner feelings, penetrating self-analysis and self-contemplation, that might bestow an immortality of sorts upon the artist. However, does this apply to the photographic self-portrait, or can the self be used as a platform to go beyond the identity of the photographer to speak at large of much wider social status? This will be considered through the discussion of the outsider, intimacy, and the power of body representation within the self-portrait, and the analysis of key photographers, Alina Brotheris, Nan Golding, and Nikki S. Lee. According to professor and academic, Ghassan Haj, the outsider can be defined as someone who does not experience social or cultural belonging, thus feels culturally out of place. Isolation, detachment, and the use of solitary portraits are common themes within her work. Brotheris used herself as a means to explore the notion of the outsider by photographing times where she felt most vulnerable. Consistent with the view of Roland Barthes in Camera Lucidia that the viewer is the reader, Brotheris provides viewers with a blank screen, a surface on which to project their own feelings and desires. Brotheris's early works support the view of Doris Lessing, but there is no way in not being intensely subjective. Although highly personal, her work is delivered in a formal language that is aesthetic and confused <coughs> that others viewing the work can relate to. Larger themes are picked up on as a result of the image, such as the incoherence between a person and their environment, and the simple small means with which one tries to take place within society. This image, taken from the series Sui Francais 2, was taken while Brotherus was undertaking her artist residency in Paris, where she was unable to speak the language, poignantly photographing her life at times where she felt most uncertain and unstable, using the self-portrait to represent such feelings experienced throughout this period in time. It shows a highly personal technique learned to <coughs> highly personal technique employed to learn a new language. The clown-like red nose and the childish pose demonstrate the comedic and playful method used by Brotheris in an attempt to feel included, demonstrating the banality and enforced immaturity personally adopted when learning a new language. Through direct connection to her own life, Brotheris states, the self-portrait acts as a way for viewers to see her work with ambiguity, to speak at large of issues including loneliness and the importance of spoken language to create a basic sense of security in an attempt to feel less of an outsider. Various methods are adopted within self-portraiture to portray a sense of intimacy and capture private moments. A technique adopted by American photographer Nan Golding is a redirection of the domestic photograph known as a snapshot, presented for public display. According to art critic A.D. Coleman, the snapshot aesthetic is an interruption of the flow of events of time an interruption whose purpose is to preserve rather than to observe. Golden focuses on the taboo and the mundane, defying the conventions of this genre. This combined with the technical shortcomings of the snapshot aesthetic add to the candid, intimate and diary-like approach. Supporting the view proposed by curator and writer Charlotte Cotton that the employment of the snapshot method creates a language of private experience communicated to the viewer. The lack of formal role of photographer within this image, the inclusion of the camera and the casual interior create a sense of honesty adding to the intimate style of Golden's photography. Breaking down boundaries, putting the spectator on the same level as Golding, creating a private moment between herself and the viewer. Courageous in approach, the juxtaposition of the red lips with the bruised eyes conform to the expectation that the female subject should wear makeup and be decorated with jewellery. However, Golden refused to hide her injuries. Challenging both the male gaze and the social convention of femininity, 
representing a personal documentation of domestic abuse. Although an experience not everyone can relate to, the adoption of the informal snapshot aesthetic represents the effects of domestic abuse, a common occurrence often underrepresented in public discourse. Unsettling and unapologetic in nature, Golding goes beyond personal experience through application to personal struggles, eliciting similar emotions with the viewer, such as experiencing change or the breakdown of relationships, through the use of the self-portrait and intimate photography. Masquerade, performance and facade are used within contemporary art portraiture that, according to Bright, allows for a different voice to be adopted. This considers the photographer's ever-shifting position in the world to create wider discussion. As stated by writer and performance artist Dana McLeod, Korean-born New York photographer Nikki S. Lee uses performance and disguise in her series projects. Altering the self as a means to focus on broader issues of identity, exploring biases surrounding class, race, culture, gender and sexual politics within varying social circles, expressing individuality but also group identity. The contrast of clothing and makeup adopted by Lee within the first and the second images are clear representations of the strength of body modification and the power of body language as a form of communication. Supporting the view of director and curator Robert, Roger Mayhew that the use of body language makes identification from man to man easier. The confident pose in the first image contrasts to the frail hunched body language of that of image two. Details such as these show how subtleties, including stance and pose, are important aspects to help construct and shape identity. Sensitive details including placement of the hands, weight shifted to one side in the first image compared with the tight, tense and frail body language of that of the second, are instances to show how self-representation can be used as a vehicle in which manipulation of character can occur. As identified by scholar Matthew McKinney, the focus on identity and the destabilisation of the fixed self can be applied from Lee to the exploration of subcultures as a whole demonstrating how camouflage within self-portraiture and subtleties in body representation can be used to address key factors for acceptance within society and particular social circles, reminding us that identity is a costume that we all wear. The use of the self-portrait in contemporary photography is found to have more collective experience than initially <coughs> assumed, supporting the view of writer and editor Erica Billiter that almost every self-portrait points beyond itself, with the inclusion of the ph photographer in an image seen to aid the message being portrayed, rather than purely the focus. Supporting the view of Angela Kelly in publication The Photography Reader, that personal is political, emphasising personal experience should be seen in relation to a wide context. Seeking beyond the lived experience of the photographer through applying such emotions and experiences onto the viewer. Therefore, through the outsider, intimacy and body representation, self-portraiture is used to portray small and private moments in the life experiences of Nan Golding, the staged moments in the artistic practice of Eleanor Brotherus and the performed moments in the practice of Nikki S. Lee to respond to wider, wider social matters of femininity, identity, performance, gender and isolation.
kind of how other people see them as well. How do you feel self-portraiture is sort of related now that we've got so much instant <coughs> material like the selfie? Um, do you feel it still holds up as an art form or do people not take it seriously anymore? I think it is still an art form. I feel that the selfie is sort of just an updated version of self-portraiture, so I still think the two kind of link together. 